Hey everyone, Mr. Wineland here. The final section of chapter 11 in this unit. Uh, we're going to finish up the unit about, oh, uh, about the territory being split up and divided. Uh, we talked in brief, previously in section one that the lands were being divided for uh, certain white societies or white settlers. And so we're going to talk about this uh, setting up Oklahoma territory and eventually uh, setting up the state of Oklahoma, as we'll talk about in the next chapter. But the Organic Act in May 2nd of 1890, the Oklahoma Territory was defined uh, west of the land of the five tribes, including no man's land. So the land we were talking about that was slowly being divided up uh, in central Oklahoma, that territory was being classified, or the unassigned lands are now being classified as Oklahoma Territory. It's no longer just the unassigned lands because now they've been assigned and um, they're being settled. So President Harrison was a point... Uh, was to appoint a governor, secretary, and three Supreme Court judges. So we're starting to see a government be established in this territory. Citizens would then elect a 13-member council, 26-member House of Representatives, seven counties uh, set up in the citizens to vote on county names until it could create their own laws They would use the laws of Nebraska, which was the territory. Uh, here's your answer number seven here in the parentheses. Uh, lands came by te claimed by Texas were ruled by Supreme Court as part of Oklahoma Territory. No longer were they uh, to be Texas Territory um, or Texas property. Uh, Greer County was later divided into four counties, Beckham, Jackson, Greer, and Harmon. Uh, homesteaders were allowed to keep their land in this area. Uh, we do see that Choctaw was compensated for their loss of land. As far as no man's land, uh, Oklahoma Panhandle was uh, had been uncertain about the ownership of that boundary. Uh, but it was ultimately um, uh, as, uh, the boundaries and other areas were around it were some uh, thought to be part of the Cherokee outlet. Uh, we do see that also known as public land strip and neutral strip of Indian territory. Though some of the already settled there uh, wanted their own uh, Cimarron territory, uh, officially settlement was allowed in 1890. This uh, Ultimately, this whole county was known as uh, Beaver County, which was the whole panhandle was known as Beaver County. But eventually, by statehood, it was broken up into Beaver, Texas, Cimarron counties. So uh, let me go ahead and turn off my music, make sure that that's not playing. I don't think it will record anyway. Um, George W. Steele of Indiana was named governor. Robert Martin was named secretary. Steele arrived May 23rd of 1890 and traveled the territory and set up the date for the territory elections for the legislature. Uh, first act was to provide uh, for care and custody of the prisoners. So uh, basically uh, prisoners convicted of crimes. So, um, so basically this was the first um, uh, basically... Um, Actually, it's it's actually I think uh, criminal labor, criminal. Let me actually add this labor was uh, actually the first issue uh, brought up in um, when it came to uh, being talked about for um, legislation. So it was the first actual issue talked about. Public schools quickly established under the Organic Act. Then we had the first territorial government. Uh, two sections of each township were reserved to fund schools. Townships include 36 in one square mile sections. Uh, sections had 640 acres. Then universities were established at Norman, agricultural and mechanical school at Stillwater, normal school for uh, teacher uh, training in Edmond, uh, and the capital was going to be in Guthrie. This was obviously OU. This was OSU, and then the one in Edmond is what is now UCO, University of Central Oklahoma. Uh, also known as the Jerome Commission leader, David Jerome, uh, was also um, was established. Uh, President Harrison wanted Indians to give up their surplus lands since there was a huge demand by whites for homesteads. So we see more lands are given to white settlers. By 1893, 15 million additional acres became available through 11, million, 11 agreements. Uh, more lands opening reservations were dissolved. We see 20,000 people participated in, on the run for the Sac and Fox and Potawatomi, Iowa, and Shawnee lands. Then 25,000 people ran on the Arapaho, Cheyenne lands. However, some of those lands, uh, this land was so rugged that settlers did not stay. 
Uh, opening of the Cherokee outlet uh, was the Tonkaw on Pawnee lands brought 10, 100,000 settlers. So the answer is Tonkaw on Pawnee. The last run ever run in this area was Kickapoo lands in 1895. As far as territorial governors, Governor Steele resigned in 1891, uh, went back to Indiana. Robert Martin, a Secretary of Territory, was acting governor until 1892. Then Abraham C. Uh, uh, was uh, second governor, followed by William Renfro of 1893 to 1897. Then 1897, Northwest School in Alva opened, and Color Ag Agricultural and Normal School opened up in Langston, or better known as Langston University. Uh, and then Cassius M. Barnes, governor from 1897 to 1901, opened University of Preparatory uh, School in Tonkawa and Southwestern Normal School of Weatherford. William Jinkson, Jenkins, governor of May through November 1901. And Thompson B. Ferguson and Frank France were the last territorial governors. Uh, last land distribution, uh, land laundry was used for later distributions. And we see 165,000 homesteaders registered at land offices. 300 registrations, cards drawn a day. Winners could pick their claim in county or plains. Uh, land was divided in Ponca, Oto, Missouri, Kaw, and Osage tribes to the members. There was no surplus of land. So even though the Osage lost some of their land, however, your answer number 11 is Osage. They, did, they were the ones that retained the mineral rights of their lands. And that's how they were able to continue to stay wealthy and gain um their success with their oil that was found there. Then pig pasture land was sold by auction and money set aside for the Kiowa, Comanche, and Apache. So that pretty much explains uh, all the land that was ultimately disputed or dis distributed and eventually setting up Oklahoma territories. Uh, Oklahoma territory. So you'd still have Indian territory and Oklahoma territory, in this one big mass of territories. Um, but that uh, set up become in what we're going to learn in the next chapter is Oklahoma ultimately becoming a state. So Oklahoma would be no longer be two territories, but become one United State, which we're going to talk about next chapter.